Cheers, folks. Welcome here to the SJP Show with me, Scott Joseph Ferris. And today, we are going to be going over, or in this moment, or tonight, whichever uh, time you're listening to this. Uh, we're going to be doing what's called a year or a decade in review. I'll be going over the last 10 years of my life. And uh, so bear with me. I got the screen up here to show you guys some photos and stuff. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, trip. So just bear with me. We're going to go ahead and just uh, jump up here and get started. Um, so basically, what you'll be seeing, you'll see me toggle through the screen back here. But don't worry, because uh, my printer ran out of ink. So I only got a little bit of my notes. Um, so I will be jumping back here to my, uh, actual notes here. So just roll with me here. So we're going to start off talking about, uh, how 2009 ended coming into 2010, 2009 ended, uh, on what many people and, and I myself would consider a high note. Um, you guys can see in this picture here, um, this is in this picture is taken in Bogota, Colombia, in South America. I had went on a USO tour and uh, played for the troops stationed in Honduras and in Colombia. This actual photo right here, if you the backdrop is the U.S. Embassy. Um, if you go back some way back in the episodes, you can hear me talk about the whole event on this, as well as my podcast with Stephen Dale Vincent, who was also on this tour with me. But the tour was a blast. Um, at the time, I <laughs> gained a little bit of weight uh so that was kind of affecting my thought process as well i was going through some life changes some self doubt um if this music thing was ever going to really work out and i was really you know super young to be even worrying about that at that time and uh so basically i made a decision on when i came back i decided that i was going to just stop playing music and so that was in july 2009 whenever i returned and quit playing music literally until November of 2010. So what did I do, you know, from the beginning of 2010 to November? Not a whole lot. Uh, there was some pivotal moments to talk about. Um, I did take time off music. Like I said, I didn't even touch a guitar for that stretch of almost a year's worth of months there. And I got a real job uh, at a nursing home, my hometown. It was a blast doing that. Um, then I went out to, uh, every once in a while, sometimes, you know, people like if they've gained weight or something, there's a pivotal moment that boom, everything clicks. And it's like, I need to do something now. Um, I was at a bar in my hometown area, uh, called two dogs. Uh, a lot of, uh, guys and girls I went to high school with were out. And so I decided to go up there and I ran into a guy I had, had not seen since probably 2005. And he came up to me and he said, uh, what happened to the old Scott? Did you eat him? <laughs> now, that's pretty funny. I I'll give him that. That's hilarious. But I knew at the time I had gained some weight significantly. And uh, so I took the time after that moment. That would have been the summer of 2010 to uh, maybe eat a little bit better and uh, go for some walks and some runs, you know. So, yeah, that was a, a big kick in the rear end uh, to me. Not only had I given up on what I loved so much music, I had given up on myself, you know, and gained that weight. And it was tough. Um, but the way life goes, uh, if you don't like something, you change it. And so I did. I worked on it. It's it's always a never-ending battle. And uh, so then we fast forward to... I actually I take that back it was about October I started playing music again I picked up the guitar and around this time uh, Jason Aldean's Big Green Tractor was really blowing up and I learned it on guitar that was the first song I had played in probably a year and um, first time I played a guitar and decided to work on learning that song I still cover it in my shows today because that song really rejuvenated me not only as a writer because i'd never really done country music up until this point prior to that i was doing like indie pop and uh, acoustic rock and different things along that nature but i decided to start up a band and start playing out um 
I to to back this band would eventually be called Midwest Avenue, which is what you all know my music as of today. Um, but to give you some context on the name Midwest Avenue, it goes all the way back to 2005, y'all. This right here was an album cover um, of an EP called Unique. Um, it was me, my dad, my uncle Jeff, and my cousin Josh. We had, me and Josh had written a fair amount of songs and uh decided to record them with Everett Bug as you can, you can hear that in a uh, prior episode and we decided that uh, we'd have a little band we did some shows um yeah there you go you can kind of see it a little bit better there it's hard to see the pictures <laughs> i know but uh, just bear with me um but yeah that's where the name came from me and my cousin Josh came up with that and so uh yeah Midwest Avenue was uh going to be reborn New members. I recruited my dad on drums, James Beaver Hopper. Some of y'all know him in my hometown. He is a fantastic artist and a musician. Then I recruited he who else? Oh yeah, well yeah, Steve Vincent that was with me on the USO tour. It was kind of hard to talk him into it at first. He was like, I don't know about that, and then he decided to roll with it. Then I needed the icing on the cake. My goal for this group was for me to not be the lead singer. And uh, so I recruited the help of a very well-known talent in my hometown area. Her name was uh, Nikki Bug. And Nikki Johnson now, she is such a fantastic singer and just a great person in general. Her whole family is super talented. She was on board. And then shortly after that, I was when she got pregnant. She was still performing with the band. We had our first show. Uh, we started practice in November, November 29th, 2010, was the start of the actual group. That was our first practice. And thanks to Facebook, I was able to go back and uh, find uh, some of these uh, little gems as far as um, what's uh, the, the time frame of different things because it's hard to remember every single thing. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, we are, uh, what was I talking about? Boom. Yeah, so 2010, the end of it, we uh, were basically just working on learning songs. And then come, uh, our first show was scheduled for April of 2011. So we're going to jump up into 2011. Um, like I said, 2010 wasn't really super eventful, but with um, just learning how to lose some weight was a big thing to uh, get through there. So we began practicing a whole lot and eventually wrote our first original song, which was uh, written by me and uh, James Beaver Hopper. I, I, I never call him James Beaver Hopper. I, we just all call him Beaver. So <laughs> that's what we'll uh, stick with going forward. We wrote a song called I Don't Belong to You. And... I will play you a little bit of that right now. Oh, yeah. Like I said. Okay. Now we got some sound going. Yeah, it's called I Don't Belong to You. I'll just play you a little bit of it. A young man singing here. Coming home, Beaver and Beaver uh, knocked it out on them lyrics. He really helped me out. He's the only person besides my cousin Josh I've ever really co-written with and came out with some good stuff. Um, so we wrote that song. That recording was from a little bit later in 2013. Um, and some other things uh, from 2011. I remember going to a lot of my brother's basketball games. Samuel, he. Uh, it was so fun watching him play. He is, is super, super skilled as a basketball player and was electric on the floor and had a lot of fun t fun moments and memories just watching him play. Um, yeah, we went to a lot. I mean, my mom went to and sister went to a lot of his games. Everyone we could make it to. 
Along with that, I also uh, played a lot of Madden football on Xbox with uh, my buddy Marcus, Matt, and Taylor. Uh, I'm sure they all remember that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, so in, uh, fast forward to April 2011, Midwest Avenue uh, started playing a ton of shows. And let's see if I can find a picture here. Yeah, this is one of our first shows here. This was at a place in Root House. Check out that young man right there. That's me, and there's Mr. Beaver Hopper right there. This is a small stage. You can see a little bit of Nikki there on the side. Um, this show, Nikki, was, like I said, mentioned that she was pregnant whenever we started the band. And she doesn't really look pregnant here because she is such a just a very tiny girl. Um, but she is sitting in a chair, as you guys can tell there, because um, she was basically on bed rest but was bound and determined to play the show. And oh, we got a little picture of Steve Vincent up here. Let's zoom in on him. Look at that young face. I tell you what, no beard or anything and short hair. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but, yeah, so Nikki uh, ended up having to leave the band due to playing a couple shows on bed rest and all that good stuff. Which props to her for doing that. That she is a champ. All oh, right. Like I said, so Nikki had to leave the band. Um, so there was another girl, Megan Hedinger, from uh, Alsea, Illinois, which is a kind of a neighboring town to uh, my hometown of Whitehall. I had seen her uh, play actually at a place called Nashville North, opening up for some artist. I forget who it was. Um, it was pretty. It was a signed artist. It was a big show. And she opened up, and they, they said that she was from Winchester. And I'm like, that's right up the road from me. So after the show, I hunted her down and talked to her and introduced myself. That was like years and years prior to this. This was That was probably back in like 2003 or four. And um, I, then I had gotten to know her. Uh, she went, went to the same college together uh, for a hot minute. And then uh, we also worked at the same place at the same time, at, that, at this time. And so I'd been picking her brain, you know, about maybe coming and joining the band. And she uh, decided to come in and audition. And we hired her right then and there. And uh, needless to say, that was a, a pivotal moment for the group at the time. And then in May of 2011, my sister Callie got married to her husband, Brandon. Shout out to Brandon out there. And in uh, two, June 2011, we uh, played uh, what's called the Texaco Country Showdown. Just think of a... Uh, American Idol, but on a very like a much smaller regional level, and it was in Macomb, Illinois, and we lost. We got second, lost to like an eleven-year-old boy. But the reason I mention this is uh, we created a great relationship with the Macomb radio station at the time, WLMD, and they helped us out with some shows and some promotional items. Then July 2011 was a big uh, boost for us. We wrote and recorded and released a song with the longest title ever. The Worst of You Gets the Best of Me. That was written by me, James Beaver Hopper, and Megan Hedinger, the lead singer at the time. I'll play a little bit of the original demo. Let's find it here. I think it's right here. Whoa, 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 whoa. It was all self-recorded, too, so that was a cool deal. And Beaver's bass line in this. It's so funny listening to myself sing back then because I was like trying so hard and uh, had a lot of developing to do, but you got to do it. All right, so that's the worst of you gets the best of me. As I said, that was a pretty uh, pivotal song for us. A lot of folks dug it. And uh, fast forward to August, that following month, we played another Texaco Country Showdown in Pittsfield, Illinois, and we won. We won the dang thing. That was, I think I got a picture of that, actually. Let's see here. 
I did somewhere. But I was on Steve Vincent's uh, birthday, so that was kind of a cool thing. And then after that was a big crazy deal. The worst of you got the best of me, or the worst of you gets the best of me. I uh, received his first radio airplay uh, on a local station, WJBO 105.5, uh, which is a local market radio station. Um, but it was so cool to hear yourself on the radio. It's like just kind of unreal. And uh, then we were off to the races. September through December, we started playing more and more shows um, in the region, not just in our hometown area, and kind of became a uh, more stable band in the area and doing a lot more, uh, what I say, a lot more uh, important shows and drawing bigger crowds. This is actually us uh, at the Texaco Country Showdown. Oh, and uh, I was in Springfield. Then, um, but yeah, I kind of want to show you a picture of the group at the time. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. There we go. This is one of our promo shots we did. <laughs> Didn't realize how bad our camera was at the time because all the glare going through. She got my dad, me, Beaver back there, Megan, and then Steve Vincent on the far left over here. So that was uh, just, like I said, it was a blast doing that. We had so much fun uh, doing, we did like different Halloween shows, like right here. Except for this Halloween show, I didn't wear my Where's Waldo thing. Megan dressed up as a mummy, so uh, that was cool. And then, let's see, where are we at? Oh, 2012, so we're on, we're cruising on through this here, trying to save a little bit of your time out there. I appreciate you all, if you all are just chilling out on the couch checking out the show here and hanging out with me i appreciate it so much but in 2012 was a very pivotal year in my life and the most growth in my life personally and physically as i said back in 2010 i started working on my weight and my fitness and this was a big um thing so for a year and a half from 2010 to that till 2012 I didn't go to the gym or anything. I would I just watched what I ate, went on like some walks outside, jogging and different things, and some push-ups and sit-ups at the house. Um, but in January 2012, my buddies Matt and Jeremy are like, when you start working out, let's go to the gym. So that uh, began my love of working out, and I owe it to those two. Another funny thing about this time in 2012 uh, sometimes there's like different popular things that happen and uh, that kind of, uh, I guess you'd call them crazes or phenomenons. Um, everybody's doing and posting about online. And uh, one thing that I remember so well was uh, the standing broomsticks is to find a broomstick and stand it up without anything touching it. I remember going next door to uh, this girl, Christy, from hometown. She had her own beauty salon. And I went over there and I stood up a broom on her uh, like floor there. And she th like she, I think she probably thought I was crazy. I always stopped in there and visited all the time. I think I have a picture of it somewhere. Um, well... I'm so prepared here, folks. Normally, I'm knocking this out like crazy. But we're just kind of hanging out. I figured I'd just roll with this and see what we can get done. Um, but, yeah, so we're going to move on from the broomstick thing. But if any of y'all remember standing up a broomstick on a uh, floor without anything holding it up, uh, let me know because I want to make sure that it wasn't just me that was crazy and doing all this stuff. Uh, but I, like I said, I remember tons of people posting about it, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> why that is so, so important eight years later, I don't know, but it was. But January through May, we were playing shows all over. Uh, Megan was the lead singer of Midwest Avenue, and uh, then in May of 2012, um Back in the past, I used to, before 2010, I, as a teenager, I was playing shows as a, a solo acoustic artist, as Scott Joseph Ferris or City Like Drive. They were pretty interchangeable. 
Um, but I stopped doing all that in 2009. And uh, so we did a, a reunion show with some bands that were popular back from like 2007, 8, and 9 in the local area. And we played, did a show in Alton with uh, Whisperwall. It was a great band out of that area. And I was uh, the last time I actually did any SJP songs in public. And then May, at the end of May, um, Megan leaves the Midwest Avenue. And that put us in a very uh, interesting position because two weeks later, three weeks, two or three weeks later, we had a show in June at a place I worked so hard to get us booked at called Cruisins 2 in Peoria. Beautiful venue, great owners, and uh, we didn't have a lead singer. And I did sing some songs uh, at the shows, but not enough for a full show, and Steve Vincent did as well. But Megan sang 85% of the songs. So we decided we couldn't find a chick singer at the time to make uh, the show happen, so uh, I made up a whole set list of songs for me to sing and we learned a whole show within that two week time frame to go and play Cruisins 2 in Peoria and I can only find uh, one picture from then and it was uh, like I said it was a very uh, interesting show it, it went over really well but I was terrified zoom in here a little bit see the face on that guy that is the face of pure just terror and fear but sometimes you got to like this show specifically did a lot for me internally and mentally i was able to face the fear of doing a full show wondering if my voice was going to give out wonder if i was going to remember all the words wondering if it was even going to sound good and i knew the band would but my vocals over the top of that how that would uh play out and neil say the show went off without a hitch and it was a complete blast but yeah, it's like I said, it was a it was a scary moment for me. And then at June through December uh, 2012, Midwest Avenue like really picked up, and we were playing shows all over. Like at the prior to this, we were playing shows like maybe a Friday here, Saturday there, maybe I'd say three to four shows a month. And then after that time frame, I we just started booking up this this the calendar for the rest of the year. And we played a show like every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and some Thursdays. So looking at 10 to 15 shows a month, which was a big learning experience. And uh, July 2012, I met uh, William Fitzsimmons in a Walmart. He's a singer um, of just some amazing songs and songwriting Here's a picture of me and William Fitzsimmons. Let's see if I can pull her up here. Oh, yeah. Let me see there. But, yeah. Whoop. There it is. But, yeah, I met him. He was picking up diapers for his kid. He had just moved to Jacksonville, Illinois, and I uh, told him I was a big fan of his. And we had a great conversation. It's so neat to meet people that have, like, impacted the way you write and uh, just wrote songs that touched you and was able to, um, you know, make an impact on you. Then we, uh, yeah, started recording at this time, started recording our first uh, original EP called Red Wine in July of 2012. And I did all the producing on that. I think I had, yep, here's a picture of our little recording setup in the garage, or not, not the garage, in the uh, Steve Vincent's basement. And uh, had the little board there, the computer, and all that there. Um, it was it was something, let me tell you. And uh, they were five songs, all songs I had written besides one was the original that me and Beaver Hopper wrote. And at this time, uh, Beaver had left the band as well. And Steve Stephen Wayne Farmer was with us, the Flying F. Loved that guy. Um, he still plays with me today. And uh, he's, what a great guy he is. And then August 14th, 2012, uh, the Red Wine EP was released. And I was really scared. I wasn't sure how it would be received. Our shows were going great. But we were doing a lot of covers, you know. And it wasn't um, 
uh, our original stuff. I mean, people still want to hear the worst of you gets the best of me, but it was a duet song, so it was kind of hard to do with just me. But I rewrote it for this EP and uh, did just like an all male version. But it hit number thirty on the new country music release releases charts on the I- iTunes. Uh, charts this was back before there was like apple music spotify and all that like itunes you had to physically go on there and buy the uh, download so it was a different time and that was our first time releasing into the digital market so super grateful for that the next up december 16th uh was a pivotal moment in uh the life and times of the band we were playing a show right here i think i Let's see if I got any pictures of this. But uh, why was it a pivotal show, you ask? There it is. The Canopy Club. Yeah, there, there's the old Scotty boy wearing a Budweiser hat. That was our sponsor at the time. And um, let me get out of the way here. Woo! Let me show you a couple jams there. But yeah, we were at the Canopy Club. The Canopy Club in uh, Urbana, Illinois, Champaign-Urbana area. I was so pumped to play this show because it was at a big venue and part of what it was called their Boots and Booze uh, show. But December 16th, 2012, uh, whenever the show was, we uh, were all in there doing sound check. Nobody had showed up yet. The doors uh, hadn't opened yet. And I was like, we are going to be playing to a big packed out crowd. Our CD just came out not too long ago. We're going to be selling all that, uh, meeting the tons of new fans. It's going to be, we're just going to keep building this. Step up on stage. One guy in the crowd. One guy. And on one of our breaks, I went out and thanked him and talked to him. Come to find out, he wasn't even from the area. He was from Decatur. He was a truck driver. Um, had some issues and uh, with his vehicle. Had to stay in a hotel, so he came to the Canopy Club to have a couple drinks. And uh, so, yeah, we didn't draw even one person from the area to our show. And uh, talking about uh, becoming self-conscious and uh, just wondering how in the heck are we going to right this ship, you know, and... It was a tough thing to go through, uh, and it, that was our last show of the year that year. Um, so it was a tough note to end on, but you learn through those things to keep pushing forward. Like I said earlier, you don't like something, you change it. So I was like, we need to promote better. We need to create more content. And uh, so we moved on with that. And uh, I remember in the end of December, January, Going from 2012 to 2013, um, I'd getting a lot of. I, I had a lot of people saying, "Yeah, you should go and just be a solo artist," you know. Um, and there's a lot of different people pulling me in different directions as to what to do. So I decided to start a solo career while I'm still in Midwest Avenue. So doing them separately, but at the same time. And I couldn't use my, I didn't want to use my full name, Scott Joseph Ferris, as I'd used in the past. Reason being is because that music back then holds such a special place with me and and the folks that dug it at the time that I didn't want to confuse the two. And plus my last name is spelled P-H-A-R-E-S, which is super hard to pronounce. So I uh, decided to go with Scott Wyatt, which was my grandma Helen's last name that got me into playing music along with my dad. And so the stage name Scott Wyatt was born in February of 2013. And uh, we continued playing uh, shows, uh, Midwest Avenue. And then I began booking solo gigs as a solo acoustic artist as Scott Wyatt. Me and my brother moved into a house together and rented it for a while. In March, I don't know why I put this on here, probably because I got a picture of it somewhere here. Um it says in March of 2013, sometimes I get these weird ideas of like, like I'm so scared to do something. So I'll just do something extreme to, uh, n- never anything bad, but I'll just do something extreme to, uh, test my, uh, resilience. <laughs> and, uh, I decided to shave my head, womb, 
all the way like I, I didn't like shave it like razor shave it but with a uh the lowest blade uh on my beard and mustache trimmer i uh cut it all the way down to the scalp and i I'll, I'll be bringing up a picture of that here in a second um but like i said it definitely uh, was a trip uh shaving my head i i remember the night i did it it was actually the night i wrote a song called i heard the yeah the evening after I'd written a song called uh, Manny the Drinking Man, uh, which is a song that kind of came to me in a dream. Uh, and I woke up and wrote the dang thing, and it was a, a fun little deal. So let's see here. What's that February, March? There it is. There, here we go. You want to see me bald? There it is. Let's zoom in real good on that. <laughs> Whoa. There he is, old bald Scott right there. <laughs> the look on my face says it all. I made a mistake. Somebody put my hair back. <laughs> oh, goodness. So next up, we're going to be talking about. Yeah, at this time, uh, Midwest Avenue was still going strong. We were playing shows left and right. Like I said, every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, sometimes if there was a holiday or something that came into, um, the time frame, then, um, we'd play that too, like, uh, Thanksgiving, I remember. And, uh, so this time was like, like I said, I'm also, I'm doing Midwest Avenue along with, uh, doing the solo Scott Wyatt stuff and you check out on the stage here. It's hard to quite see, but that's me and the guy in my home near in Illinois his name's Devin Clemens. Check out the Devin Clemens band. They would put out some fantastic stuff. And I was aware of Devin's music. And uh, we were friends on Facebook who would never have met or even conversed in person or online. And I'm at, I go to see him play at the Illinois State Fairgrounds uh, in the beer tent. And I'm just out in the crowd. And then I'm not even there five minutes and Devin looks at me we make eye contact and you know it's like I don't know if he knows who I am he he does I didn't know if he knew that I knew who he was and he's like Scott Wyatt get up here on the stage and sing a song with us and I'm like whoa um so I hopped up on stage and I'm like what what do you what song are you doing I was like please be something I know and uh, he's like oh we're doing uh uh Keep your hands to yourself by Georgia Satellites. I'm like, heck yeah, everybody knows that jam. So uh, we rocked it. It was uh, definitely an experience. And shout out to Devin for that. That was a, a fun memory. And then after uh, that, like I said, Midwest Avenue kept playing all along that time like crazy. And I went to Nashville to record uh, my first solo uh, EP, as Scott Wyatt. And then, oh, there's my cat coming down the stairs. And uh, then in December 2013, Night Roads was released. And all along this time, whenever like I'm releasing uh, this new music, um, there was definitely a uh, strong push still in Midwest Avenue. We were playing shows um, all the time and... It, well, I mean, we. It, it, I, it's hard to explain what my thought process was and why I was doing the two things at once. Um, I'd like to think I wasn't being selfish, um, but you never. It's hard to. It, it's hard to explain. This is a little bit of Night Roads. Which I ended up, Night Roads was actually a song that uh, Midwest Avenue was going to be recording for the follow up for Red Wine. And we never did it. Um, so I ended up doing it for this uh, release. This is May the Drinking Man. A lot of folks in my hometown still get a kick out of this song. Yeah, so. That's a little bit of that. But like I said, it was released in December of 2013. December 12th, 2013, which was my mother's birthday. It is my mother's birthday. Well, not December 12th, 2013, but December 12th is. And then we're going to rock right on in here to 2014. If this is going to let me do it. Let's see here. Boop. 
There we go, 2014. When he was drunk all the time. Yeah, 2014 was a trip of a year as well. Um, my uh, solo project uh, was uh, Scott Wyatt started going uh, more in a full band direction with none of the members of Midwest Avenue. Midwest Avenue was its own entity. And let's see if I got a picture just to show you guys before I forget here. Of Midwest Avenue before um, we get moving on too far. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Yeah, so you can kind of see here Midwest Avenue. Over here. Let me slide. Oh, don't knock over this table. We see this guy over here. That's Steve Farmer in the red shirt. Steve Vincent, the me. And over here, check out my dad here. He look, looking like a stud. Claps in his hands here. <laughs> And uh, at this time, uh, Midwest Avenue started writing. Uh, it's the beginning of January 2014. We started writing uh, for our up a new EP, and then um, kind of an odd thing happened here. Um, Midwest Avenue got asked to open up for Adam Craig and Decatur, and me thinking that my solo career, the Scott White stuff, was going. Uh, in a different direction, going higher uh, than where going to another level from what Midwest Avenue was, I decided to promote the show as Scott Wyatt instead of Midwest Avenue, which did not go well with some of the band members, and and, and I understand it rightfully so. It made complete sense to me, um, but I think it rubbed everybody the wrong way, kind of, and that was the end of Midwest Avenue in April 2014. And then, ironically, in the same time frame, um, I started playing, me and Steve Vincent from Midwest Avenue started playing in another artist band, uh, Gracia Harrison, that was on The Voice, season three, I think, or four. And I played a guitar for acoustic guitar for her and electric, and uh, we started doing some shows and practicing up for some of the stuff she had coming up. And, uh, yeah, so it was... Uh, a trip and then in may of 2014 was the boondock st jude uh show with some great local artists brushville not i wouldn't say local but great regional artists in, in the midwest uh brushville and i played acoustic guitar for gracia harrison at that and i also played a solo show a solo set as scott white of that show and eric burgett and heather riley and some other fantastic artists from the area then June 2014 was uh, my first time ever uh, playing the CMA Fest in Nashville. And uh, let's see if I got, I got a picture of that somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah, there's a couple of them right there. But yeah, it was uh, pretty fun to be playing in uh, Nashville during CMA Fest. There was so many people there. That was my first time ever being in town for that. And that was uh, definitely an experience in itself, just, just getting through the traffic and all that good stuff. And also this time uh, was I went to go see a guy, Randy Montana, that was playing a show over on the Chevy stage. And that's where I met uh, Slim Gamble that plays for Lady Annabellum. I, I recognized him from the DVD of Lady Annabellum's I have and Little did I know that meeting would come into him playing electric guitar on some stuff that's actually going to be coming out in the future. And then uh, 2014 to uh, June, uh, with Gracia Harrison opened up for the Swan Brothers. Uh, June 21st was the debut of my solo project's full band uh, at the Green County uh, Fair in my hometown county. And I was so pumped for this. <clears throat> I guess I just didn't realize it at the time or realize like the musicianship that we truly had in Midwest Avenue, but this was a whole different animal. Um, had uh, some great players playing with me. Is then there, uh, the bass player? I I I just I guess I just didn't pick it up at practice for some reason. But uh, the show did not go super well. Um, I ended up 
setting my guitar down and asking the bass player for his bass guitar. And I played bass for the whole last set. So we could end on a stronger note. And uh, so that was a tough time. Then uh, June, July 25th was the day that we went and opened up uh, with Gracia Harrison's band for Scotty McCreary. And uh, that was the biggest crowd I'd probably seen since um, the uh, uh, Bogota, Columbia show. And we had a blast doing this. I still remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I I felt like at that time there we, we could have played Mary Had a Little Lamb and it would have gone over super great. Here's another picture kind of getting a good idea of like what it was like there on the old stage of Rooney. But yeah, and see us all up there on stage and the crowd and everything. But yeah, so then shortly after that, July 25th, like I said, opened up for Scotty McCreary with Grace Harrison. I was At the time, I was doing a lot of writer's rounds in Nashville as well. And uh, August 2014, or 2014, um, I left Gracia Harrison's band to focus more on my solo career. And then uh, November 24, 2014, uh, geez, I, easy for me to say, right? Um, me, my buddy Jeremy, and my sister Kayla, we went to uh, WWE, professional wrestling, you know, fake fighting, love it. I uh, went to uh, Survivor Series, and we paid like 40 bucks, and we were on the uh, last row uh, behind like the commentators table, like on the, on the floor, but way in the back, hard to see. And, um, so that was where our seats were. So we go down there to go to our seats and our rows, not there. Then, so we're like, well, what do we do? So we go back up we, uh, to talk to one of the people there, the building and said, Hey, you know, our row isn't there. Like, Oh, were you in row J? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right, when you go to box office, get you some other seats. So I'm like, oh my goodness! So I know where they're putting us. We're going way up to the top now, and uh, so the guy gets the tickets from the box office, and he tells us three. He doesn't give us the tickets, but he says, "Come with me. I'll take you to your seats." We're like, okay. So we we go down a level, and we're going down another level. And then we're on the floor, and then we're walking. He walks us right into stage right of the ramp where the wrestlers walk down in the front row. I'm not sure how that row was open, but yeah, that was the night that Sting from WCW fame made his debut in WWE in November 2014. Uh, WWE Survivor Series was uh, one of the coolest nights ever. On to uh, January 2015. Uh, in January I was no of 2015, I was nominated for Songwriter of the Year in Nashville Universe Music Awards. And I uh, was pumped for that. That was pretty amazing to just be in the conversation. And didn't win it, but just to be even in the conversation was a fantastic deal. And uh, at the time, then I recruited some other uh, band members for the Scott Wyatt full band. And I was doing a lot of shows as that. Uh, and tons of uh, Nashville, uh, or writers rounds down in Nashville. And then in uh, one of the funnest things about uh, songwriter rounds is you, you never know who you're going to meet. And uh, I've met some fantastic folks over the years doing these uh, writer's rounds, as well as heard some amazing songs. And then uh, I went in the summer of 2015, I believe it was June. I was at a St. Louis Cardinals game and uh, this guy walked, was walking up the middle of the aisle like, to go get something to eat. And I was like, that looks like Joe Nichols. I'm like, so I said, hey, are you Joe Nichols? And he's like, yeah, I sure am. I'm like, whoa. Didn't know what to say after that. And at the time, ironically, I just watched his uh, a show on CMT called Backstory about his career and how he got started and stuff. So got to meet him and talk about the music business and just random things. His uh, fandom as a Cardinals fan from back when he was a kid, listening to the radio while he was going to bed for late night Cardinal games and stuff. In 2015, I uh, went to Owensboro, uh, Kentucky, and went to what's called the uh, they had a, their first ever country con convention, and 
got to sign some autographs, play a couple, uh, played a couple sets on a couple different days there, and then left at 4 a.m. at the day after the last, uh, the day after that event, left at 4 a.m. to make it to Green County Days to play in Root House, Illinois, my hometown area. And I had to call ahead to have the guys have my amp and my do my vocal check, do everything, because I was literally going to get there right at noon, which was the time it was starting. I literally pulled up there at 11.58 a.m., walked up, got up on stage, and I didn't say, hi, bye, how you doing to the guys? I'm like, all right, let's click off the first song, and boom, we were into it. And uh, so that was pretty much 2015 in a nutshell. Then I... Uh, 2016 was a great year as well. Um, I met Ric Flair uh, and Brett the Hitman Hart, two of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Still doing tons of writer's rounds down in Nashville and recorded some demos with Skip Mitchell, old guitar player for uh, Oak Ridge Boys, as well as some other bands. Super cool guy. And then uh, I also started dating Stephanie, which was a girl that ended up becoming my wife. So I was... uh, pretty wild time and then also this time um was really we had played this the, my family has this big i wouldn't say obsession but we just like to play the game spades it's a card game and uh, 2016 was the really the year that we really i mean we played i bet you over 100 100 150 games and we have a notebook where we keep track of all of it so we played tons of spades this time and then uh March 2016, after I got back to my hotel, uh, America's Best Value Inn. We stayed them the, the ones where you get the best bang for your buck, right? And uh, after I got back from my riders round, uh, there was a Hooters across the parking lot where I used to go and would grab like supper for the night. And uh, so I walk in there, and there's only, not really too many people in there. And uh, I'm just kind of looking around, seeing who all is there, and look over to my right, and I'm like, hmm, that guy looks like david nail and uh so i looked up on twitter and stuff see where he was and where he had been playing at and um by golly he had been playing at the uh grand Ole opry like i think it was two or three days or no no it was the same day yeah he'd played the opry that day or evening and so i'm like mm, i'm gonna go ask him if, if, it, if this is david nail and this i did and then uh long story short um, he invited me to sit down with him and his friend that was with him and we just talked about music and life and he grew up in near St. Louis so I was familiar like with his hometown area so that was a pretty cool little deal to uh, run into him and do all that stuff and just pick somebody's brain that you've been a big fan of which I mean how often do you get to do that you know so I always try to soak those moments in and uh, in the summer of 2016, me and my wife, well, girlfriend at the time, but my wife now, we went to South Carolina to her, her uncle's wedding. So the first time going to South Carolina, it was a lot of fun and went on some little, uh, what was it, a little, I guess you'd call it a, uh, shoot, I don't know what you'd call it. Went to Savannah, Georgia, and it was where you go and like you hop up in a bus and then they drive around and kind of tell you the history about the, the uh, place. So, yeah, that was a good time. And then September of 2016 um, was the uh, Root House Sesquicentennial, their 150th celebration. And got to uh, go on there, and my band played. Um, That was my first time probably that Steve Vincent had played with me since, what was it, 2014? Yeah, I think. And um, so... But we all, all the guys in Midwest Avenue, we all remained friends after that. And then uh, December of 2016, which was pretty cool. My wife at the time was living in, or well, she was my girlfriend at this time, but it's weird to say that now. Um, but we went to uh, this place in Jackson, Tennessee, and the uh, band that was playing sounded super good, and... Um, it was at a Red Bones Grill in Jackson, Tennessee. And um, the guy's like, make some noise for my nephew, Patrick Willis. Get up here and sing a song. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Patrick Willis from the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, so I got to meet him, uh, possibly the most buff dude I've ever seen 
in person. <laughs> so he was jacked. And uh, moving on to 2017, as I had mentioned, you know, the spades card game in my family, we were going strong and still playing all the time, uh, a couple times a weekend, or even during the week sometimes. That's how we had sell, we'd sell in celebrations of holidays, birthdays, with uh, a big spades game, or maybe three or four, stay up till midnight, 1 a.m. sometimes, going crazy playing spades. And... Um, and then February 17th uh, was a pretty cool, or February, yeah, February 17th, 2017. Uh, me and my wife and her uh, dad and stepmom all went to the Jack Daniels distillery. I was kind of neat to see how they go through the process of making uh, Jack Daniels whiskey. And uh, so, yeah, I, that, was a, that was a fun time. So if you've never been, I recommend you go at least once. And at this time, also, I always watching wrestling, you know, me and my mom, my sister, we would keep track in a notebook um, of, like, the matches for, say, Monday Night Raw, and then we'd all make our pick of who was going to win, and then circle who got it right, and then keep track of it all. It's always fun little things like that. And then uh, May 24th, 2017 was a pretty big uh, moment in time in my life. Um. Let's see if I can find it here. I should have it. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, I thought I did. But anyways, it was my uh, last day uh, working at Whitehall Nursing and Rehab, which was uh, the place I'd worked for a long time and made a lot of friends and whatnot. And uh, hang on a second. I should have that. Woo, because I'm in April right here. Let's get down here to March. There it is. I knew I had this picture of our last family night with all the staff. I still go there and visit, just play their uh, Christmas party. And uh, so, yeah, you can kind of see all the folks there. But yeah, I love my time there. And then I, around in 2017, I wasn't playing any like uh, full band shows. Uh, it just kind of all fizzled out as far as trying to maintain a full band um, practice. So I was doing a lot more acoustic shows then in 2017. And uh, also went to a ton of concerts with my wife and her well, girlfriend at the time. I'm trying to put it into context. And uh, wrestling shows with my sister, my uncle, my brother, and Madre. And then uh, about... Aside from the Sesquicentennial Centennial show, um, since 2014, me and Steve Vincent only played this one show together in September of 2016. But uh, Steve used to play with me in Midwest Avenue. I uh, started playing more shows with me uh, for my Scott Wyatt solo acoustic shows. And then uh, July 2017, we released a, uh, uh, an, an acoustic album called The Jackson Sessions. And then have my second uh, Songwriter of the Year nomination with uh, Nashville Universe Awards. So and that was last time, too. So maybe I need to start writing better, right? <laughs> but no, it was cool to be uh, in that conversation, like I said prior. Now, October 17th. Yeah, this, uh, this is a pretty funny story. Every Halloween since 2017, so last couple ones, uh, this gets uh, brought up. I think I got it. I have to have a picture of this. Um, it was Halloween, and my wife was taking her nephew uh, trick or treating. And there we go. And I told him, I, and then her uncle and some other relatives and aunts and cousins, they were all together and going to go uh, trick or treating. And so I had told him I would catch up with them later because I had some stuff for work to do and wouldn't be able to make it there whenever they uh, were wanting to start. So I dressed up. I stuffed a pillow in my stomach. I uh, had on this old flannel and an old raggedy coat, shaved my beard into a handlebar mustache, put on a mullet wig and and put on some glasses and carried around a newspaper and a trash bag and uh, followed them around for like, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes and uh, it was kind of I kept, I kept my distance from them where I'd pass them up, but I think they finally realized that there was that I didn't have a kid like I was waiting for 
uh, that was getting candy. So I, I, her uncle started getting kind of suspicious and was thinking about confronting me. Then uh, my wife eventually realized that it was me, and uh, it was a pretty funny time. So, uh, yeah. I started losing my voice now. But yeah, it's going to start picking up here real quick because there's a... Uh, starts flying by here so yeah then in uh 2017 also i moved into an apartment with my wife that was prior to that little halloween thing but um yeah so that in that time frame then september i know it was that it was in december 2017 i believe uh but yeah on to 2018 here boom 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 2018 uh, was my first attempt to do a podcast, and it wasn't even the one that you're listening to now. It was called Kill the Noise, and uh, it was kind of like a self-help motivational type deal, but it uh, quickly failed after three months. It was so tough to do that, but I learned a lot as far as uh, podcasting in general goes and uh, different methods. Then uh, in March of 2018, I re-released Night Road's uh, the original version uh, from 2013 uh, was re-released in 2018 with some extras, some unreleased songs, some uh, old demos of the songs that were never released. And this time I'm still playing tons of Spades games with my mom and my sister and my uncle and my brother. And I mention Spades a lot because I'm, I try. I want to make sure that uh, hopefully, like, if you guys have thought about, you know, maybe spending time, you need to spend more time with your family, do it, because it's a blast, and uh, make that a focus, and uh, and also, I mentioned Spades a lot, because I have won the most games from 2016 till current day, but I just recently lost a few days ago to my brother, Samuel, he knocked it out of the park, he uh, beat me by about 100 points. And uh, and then April 1st, 2018, I got engaged to my soon-to-be wife at this time. And I was a blast. It was on April 1st, too, April Fool's. But um, uh, Easter was also on April 1st in 2018. So that was a a fun time. It was kind of uh, surreal, you know. And... uh, it's like you want to do it you you want to make an impression and make it special but it's like you always wonder well is this is my idea going to even be remembered is it going to be special or is it going to come off hokey and stupid but it ended up coming off really well and working out great and then uh in april 2018 was also a very uh, pivotal moment in my like personal work life and healthcare industry i started a new job with the company i'm still with that i love very much and um yeah and I, I was still doing a Scott White thing in 2018, doing some writers rounds in Nashville here and there. Uh, and then in July 2018, I had my first podcast episode of the podcast you're listening to now. Started as we've gone through some changes from the Scott White podcast to the Scott Show to the SJP Show, which is the final name. Um, but there's reasons I did the change and different things. Then in August of 2018, my dad started playing some more shows with me, um, or started playing shows with me again on the drums, uh, which was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, my dad's a heck of a drummer. And then uh, September 2018, I got married and went on a Mediterranean cruise over to like Italy and Barcelona. Maybe I'll get my wife on here one of these days and we'll talk about the trip and some random things and who knows? But yeah, yes, yeah, so September 2018 was a pivotal month in the year. Then uh, the podcast is going strong. You know, I started walking through my music career and talking about uh, Midwest Avenue on it. Uh, I got to the point where I was talking about uh, my point in my career with Midwest Avenue being uh, the moniker and the music that was happening. And uh, sparked some nostalgia. And I decided to try to put together a reunion show with some old members. And uh, it it happened in uh, November 2016, or November 16th, 2018. Whoo! Tell you what, saying all these dates and everything is a trip. But yeah, we played the show in Alsi near my hometown and had a blast. Had a great crowd, and uh, yeah, it played. It was a big old gymnasium there. So then, December 2018, I released uh, my first uh, acoustic Christmas EP called Dakota. Then. Uh, 
at the time, my dad and Steve Vincent were playing with me again uh, as my, during my solo shows with Scott Wyatt. <clears throat> and Steve Vincent uh, decided that he was going to release a solo record and focus on that. And his last show with me was at the Trading Post in Oakford, Illinois, in December 2018. And what a great guy Steve is. We spent so many years traveling up and down the road uh, in Midwest Avenue. Had a lot of great memories with him. And uh, still do. And um, so now we're at, here in 2019. And things fly fast, folks. The podcast still going strong. Still playing a few spade games here and there with the fam. Um, and still doing shows in the early part of 2019 up till the summer, uh, with my dad, there were acoustic shows, but he, he played drums and I played guitar. So you get almost a full band effect with that. So it's pretty cool. And then, uh, May, 2019, me and my wife bought our first house and then we found out she was pregnant. I'm going to be a dad. Now I'm not a dad right now speaking to you, but February 14th, 2020 is the, uh, expected due date pretty pumped about that my goal is to be the best dad on the face of this planet and uh, then june 2019 i released uh me and my dad got together uh around the time of september whenever midwest avenue was doing the uh, reunion show in 2018 i recorded a couple drum tracks of him playing two of the songs that were supposed to be released back in 2013 of night roads and cowboys say goodbye and um, I decided, you know, one day I was like, I want to lay down the guitar work for uh, Cowboys Say Goodbye and see how this turns out. And uh, so we re- I released it in 2019 under Midwest Avenue. And uh, then it wasn't shortly after that, uh, July 2019, I started playing full band shows again as Midwest Avenue while still doing the Scott White solo career. <laughs> So funny how things come in a circle, right? September 2019, I started realizing there was some songs popping up on my uh, financial reports from like Spotify, Apple Music, that were not my songs. So long story short, there's another Scott Wyatt out there in the world. He's a great opera singer from the UK. And that was the end of my solo career as Scott Wyatt. Then what do I do? I decided to uh, adopt back the name that I created and used many times for my music and decided to keep it all under that umbrella as Midwest Avenue. So that is was a, a pivotal thing, but it was uh, the right move to make, and I'm glad to uh, do that. And uh, then September 2019, found out we're having a baby boy. Or, uh, and uh, Was that September? Yeah, September. Yeah, September 2019. And then September 2019 was also pretty interesting. Um, My Uncle Jeff started playing shows with us on lead guitar for the first time since 2005. So that was a pretty cool little deal. And then the last couple things, uh, November 2019, uh, the full album under Midwest Avenue called Marionette was released. Uh, Christmas EP, Santa Claus, full band Christmas EP. And then uh, just yesterday, <clears throat> December 27th, 2019, uh, the Cowboys Say Goodbye music video um, surpassed 40,000 views. And now the reason I say that is because, like, I just, it's hard to just realize, it's hard as a songwriter to pick songs that are going to resonate with people and that people are going to want to listen to and share and comment on. And uh, that's been once, and i got to follow that up. Uh, but uh, we got tons of music coming out this next year, uh, some live stuff from Songwriter Round, some unreleased stuff. Um, yeah, so keep an eye out on the Midwest Avenue page. Keep subscribing here to the SJP show. Going to be having some shows coming up with like my uncle, my grandparents. Uh, I'm going to try to get my wife on. I'm going to get my dad on again and my mom, as well as some other artists out there that uh, are going to be releasing some new music. So anyways, that is my decade recap, and my brain is about to explode. And uh, if you stuck with me all the way through this, thank you. Um, Yeah, hopefully this was as fun for you as it was for me. Um, Have a great new year, and uh, yeah. 
catch you down the road. 